Before all of that, our guest this lunchtime is an absolute powerhouse on the comedy scene, as well as a mum to three. Here to talk parenting, podcasting, and putting yourself first for a change. Please welcome Catherine Ryan. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. Loving the outfit. Oh, my God, you look amazing. So very, very nice indeed. Now, you've made this programme, Catherine Ryan's Parental Guidance. Yeah. So give us a little bit of a... <laughs> <laughs> give us a little bit of a gist of what your parenting guidelines are. Well, it's so much fun because I have a podcast called Telling Everybody Everything, and I get a lot of parents who write in and they comment on my a little bit outside the box parenting <laughs> styles. And I've been a parent since I was 24 years old. I didn't know that what I was doing was outside the box. I mean, I co-sleep, I carry my children for a long time in my arms if I can, um, and I potty train them very controversially, kind of before, like I start when they're five months. Why is that controversial though? Um, I think that when I say it, people feel attacked because <laughs> they've been brought up one way and they go, no, you can't begin potty training till 18 months or, and I'm busy and my kids are in daycare and I totally appreciate that. But what you do when you wait is you train them to go in a nappy. You are training them and then you flip it. And I don't mean to attack anyone. It's just I happen to be home. I can see when someone's making a poo face. I put them on the potty. <laughs> <laughs> Makes just, perfect sense to me. Right. And it is very common in Eastern cultures to do it that way. Yeah. And what about your hubby, Catherine, when you say you co-sleep with the children? To what age do you co-sleep with them? Well, my daughter Violet slept with me because I was a single mom till she was a lot older. Right now my son just turned two and the baby is eight months and we've had to split up uh, rooms. We're not divorced officially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although it's September. <laughs> it is September. Tis the season, hooray. I, I did love being a single mom. I think it was the most magical decade of my life. But um, <laughs> my husband sleeps with our son, Fred, yeah. and they have the master bedroom, though neither of them deserve it. What have you and got to say? What? Hang I'm on, in the hang spare on. Room, yeah. But you're so busy. You're on so many shows and you're yeah. working so hard and you're in the spare bedroom. Is that fair? It's fair to me because <laughs> my son sleeps worse than the new baby. Uh. Oh. So I'm in there tucked up with the newborn, no one's snoring, oh. and she's nice. the better sleeper. Yeah. I'm sure your husband nips in now and again though. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Have you put a chair behind the door? No. <laughs> People ask me about intimacy in our relationship, and I was never um, getting up to any of that in the marital bed because I've always been so knackered. Not at nighttime. Not at nighttime, no. no. Sneak away in the laundry room for five minutes after the school run, but not at night. <laughs> Uh, one thing I did want to clear up, because your husband, Bobby, is very handsome. Yeah. And on Friday's show, we have a little chat about something that we'd read um, that you, would I think, now made a joke about, saying that your parents, when they met him, because he was so good-looking, they thought, yeah. oh, this can't be right. He must be a, a gold digger. That's or, right. Yeah. My dad and that said... they had got a private investigator to investigate if there was something up because he was so handsome. Well, Not true. I've dated ugly men before, and no one was worried about my investment. <laughs> <laughs> My dad said, look at him, Catherine, he's either a gold digger or a blind in one eye. <laughs> <laughs> because if, if he's the good looking, if we were Benefer, he would be J-Lo. And that <laughs> is, that's very controversial. Because in my, my industry, especially I'm friends with lots of men, successful men, and their wives are younger and way better looking. No offense, Ramesh, but I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one who happens to have this really uh, sumptuous husband. But his good looks are a bonus. I've loved him since I was a child. They're a bonus, yes. Uh, actually, bonus. you have a very unusual style of comedy, and I'm just wondering, because you're quite caustic, mm. obviously. You're very upfront, very out there. How did you devise the type of humour you were going to go along with? Well, that has evolved over my career, Gloria. I think in the beginning, I would settle for any laughter. So uncomfortable mm -hmm. laughter counted as laughter. And I, <laughs> and I was a real shocking comic because I liked that kind of comedy, but I didn't understand the nuance of how to do it correctly. And then I just like softened. People use that word, you know, Catherine's really softened. I think what they're saying is I got fatter and old. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely haven't got fatter, but the shows oh, I've done with you. Damn it. I gained three stone with my son. Oh, 
Oh. Another oh, reason in the column of now. me being against men entirely. <laughs> Thank you. I've lost it because I'm busy. Go on. No, what? <laughs> The shows that I've done with you, I think you've got a very subtle way of getting your point across because most of the comedy shows are women are absolutely outnumbered by mm -hmm. men, and to get your voice heard is quite hard. And I, you know, I've, I've I've been there, and I've been on some panel shows where you think I'm never doing this again, yeah, because you've either got to swear, you've it's got to be as crude as the, uh, as they are, but you've found a way to do it. I think that when I was uh, afforded the opportunity to do stand-up comedy in this country, I felt so lucky and I was also very desperate because <laughs> <laughs> my daughter was three the first time I was ever yeah. on TV and I needed to make it work because the rent was due and I could run out the window or I could just have an authentic voice. And I never felt that I was competing. I, I just wasn't afraid. You know what I mean? I was afraid of be you know, my rent not being paid. I yeah. wasn't afraid of like, oh no, John Richardson's funnier than me. Oh well. Not, you see, yeah. the thing about being a stand-up comic, even though, you know, it, all of us have done stage as actors or for very, various reasons, but to me, it is the bravest, most scary thing that you can ever do. And I, and I watch you on stage and think, what do you feel like before that? Because we've just opened in our tour. Yes. We were terrified. Jane's lost her voice. I've got a sky coming. <laughs> and, I've heard, <laughs> and I've heard you saying, that having lupus, which we know is a horrendous condition that our own Kelly Bryan has mm -hmm. chronicled on this show, you said having lupus allows you to be stress-free. What do you mean by that? Um, yeah, it's a controversial comment in the autoimmune community, but I feel very blessed to have lupus because as soon as I started getting very ill when I was in my early 20s, um, I realized that stress really exacerbated yeah. all of those symptoms. And just being a very naive, like early 20s young woman, I was like, well, then I better not get stressed because mm -hmm. I get a fever when I'm stressed and I get joint pain and I feel really sick. And since then, it really pushed me in the direction of nothing matters very much and very little matters at all. And I just don't have any anxiety at all. And I think that's probably why you're good friends with your husband's ex-wife. <laughs> because you're not stressing about her. I love my husband's ex-wife, but I've never met her. But oh. I love her. <laughs> well, you love her in that's theme. Good. Yeah, that's I love good. that he's divorced. It is. <laughs> and I love that September is divorce month because <laughs> my advice to women who are looking for a partner is that you should never marry a man on his first try. What I love about my husband is that another woman has already humbled him. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> him so you don't think of it as shop, soil, use goods? Not at all. My husband knows he can't do better than me because he's already tried. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, look, before you go, Catherine, we've got to ask you, because we, um, we were discussing wonky veg. And we've had quite a few uh, wonky veg pictures from our viewers, so I would like you to judge. <laughs> so Mari grew this one with her granddaughter, dear. <laughs> Unfortunate. Uh, her granddaughter, Lindsay. <laughs> this is, I think, Mag's <laughs> carrot, who works in the fruit and veg department. Now, she's <laughs> spotted her fair share of wonky produce. Which do you think is the best of those two? I think it's great that we're embracing wonky veg. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think uh, the first one is yes. the winner for me. Marvellous. I'll take anything at this point. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Well, Catherine, it, as ever, it's been an absolute pleasure. And your um, Catherine Ryan's parental guidance is on the W channel. When is that coming up? Years from now, probably. <laughs> we're still, <laughs> we're still when the in kids have all left home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks anyway for joining us. Always lovely to have you. Catherine. <laughs>